only a couple of days away from the Im so we are only a couple of days away from a brand new pay per view from Impact Wrestling, and I will tell you this. I am very excited about it. I think they've done a great job when it comes to Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega. The only small criticism being, well, AEW didn't promote it very much. Well, they did promote it on the last episode of Dynamite. And let's face it, Kenny Omega is probably going to win. And if he's going to be walking around all elite wrestling television with the Impact World Championship, well, I think that's pretty good promotion for another company. But before we do get there, we do need to decide whether the go home show for that pay-per-view is any good. And we do that using the finger of power, also known as the FOP. And if you are wondering, no, I'm not a child. I'm a grown man giving a name to my finger. I'm Simon Miller. This is What Culture Wrestling. <laughs> Let's up those downs. Talking about everything we did in the intro as well, it was the Elite that was the main focus when Impact kicked off this week. And I will be completely honest with you, I didn't get it. Down. And yes, we did have a good match with the Good Brothers, the number one contenders for the tag team titles, taking on Decay, comprising of Crazy Steve and Black Taurus. But for the umpteenth time, Decay just lost again. And yes, look, I totally get it. You need Gallows and Anderson to look as strong as possible because they are going after Finn Juice on Sunday. But let's go back through their last three matches. Crazy Steve lost, Black Taurus lost, and now both of them lost. Why couldn't one of them have won when they were having singles matches? And then you could have just gone, hey, it doesn't matter though, because when it comes to the Good Brothers, they succeed and they fly when it's all about the tag. And like I say, when they were in between the ropes, this was all good. Black Taurus was doing all right before he started attacking the wrong guy, which is why you shouldn't have a bull as your tag team partner. But eventually he dived onto Gallows. He got the hot tag to Crazy Steve, <laughs> who very nicely went nuts. It didn't really last too long though, because then Gallows and Anderson did take out Black Taurus. They hit Crazy Steve with the magic killer. One, two, three. And they got on a microphone afterwards and said, we were complacent in 2020, but Finn Juice have now revved us up again, which is why we're gonna destroy them at Rebellion. So all of this made sense. I just think after the fact, if Gallows and Anderson do win the championships, wouldn't it have been nice to have Decay ready as the number one contenders themselves? And now if we do do that, it won't make any sense because they've been defeated a lot. And yes, you're probably saying to yourself, Simon, you really overthought this one. <laughs> I do like to think. It was then time, however, to really sell the main event of Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega with one of many numerous video packages where we went through the entire Impact roster and was all like, who do you think is going to win? And because there's always going to be some bias there, 99% of them were behind Rich Swan, and I thought all of these were terrific. Up. Bull things like this are always a great way to get behind these super duper mega matches, and they had complete justification here for going, I don't want Kenny Omega to win, I don't want the world champion to disappear, because what the hell is then going to happen to the company? So it really add layers of depth and it got me really excited. And while I'm pretty sure Kenny Omega will become the champion, Impact has done a good job of making me go, but what if? Kind of got the opposite too after this as we cut to another video package, but this time it was violent by design. They couldn't give two craps about any world championships. They only care about James Swan and his stupid crew who they're going to murder. At Rebellion. So now Dashwood was then taking on Susan, because of course Susan is the right hand lady of Diana Prezzo, and Diana Prezzo is going to be defending her championship at the pay per view against Tennille Dashwood. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, those words kind of just spilled out of my mouth, that does tie into the issue here, because this match and this build was only started at Hardcore Justice, which was like two weeks ago, and in those 14 days, we're meant to think that Tennille Dashwood has gone from this social media, oh, I only care about myself person, to this proficient technical wrestler just to plant the seed of doubt that she may be able to take out Deonna Perazzo. So it's all just a little bit rushed, and that's why we had this match here, so Tanil could show, hey, look, I do know what I'm doing in a wrestling ring. I'm not just obsessed with taking selfies. Even then, though, it was still Caleb with the K that caused the distraction here, because he was trying to film it on his mobile phone. For some reason, Susan didn't like that. She got hit with the spotlight kick. One, two, three, it was done. And yes, look, Tanil did show more in this match than she does do in other matches, but this just needed so much more time, which is why it's getting it down. Tenille cut promo afterwards saying that she's a bigger star than Diona Prazzo and she started the women's revolution, which is why she will win the championship at Rebellion. 
And I do think, let me make it very clear, that they're going to have a good match. But again, it's all just come from nowhere. Brian Myers then revealed that his eye has healed. And I was like, oh, thank goodness for that. He must have had a chat with Rey Mysterio. He also laughed at Matt Cardona for still living off his YouTube fame, whereas Brian Myers has evolved into something else entirely, which is why he will finish him off at Rebellion is not going to do them any favors when it comes to their podcast. But they'd had another one of these Omega versus Swan video packages, but of course this time the Good Brothers were behind Kenny Omega, which I thought was a nice touch. And then we had this really close to camera promo by Sammy Callahan, who said on Sunday, he is going to kill Trey Miguel. I mean, literally he said he's going to ensure that Miguel never gets up again. So if you are hoping to see death, you're gonna have to watch Sunday. I was then confused by Impact again. I mean, what is going on down? Because ever since Jake Something became Jake Something, I thought we'd finally figured out what to do with this guy, especially when he was feuding with Violent by Design. But ever since then, we just have him lose. It was even stranger here because he was just having a random match with Mahabali Shearer, who is now back with Rohit Raju. And I think I've got a little confused when it does come to this storyline, because I remember they fell out and then they did get back together on one of the pre-shows, but there was still tension, but here, they were just buddies again. And Jake Something does have an out in the sense Rohit Raju was on the apron causing the distraction, which allowed Shira to hit the sky high and get the victory. But you never needed to do this match in the first place because it's not tying into anything. I mean, you could have just gone and got a different opponent like Suicide. He comes and goes as much as he wants. A training montage with Trey Miguel was next. Never forget that even Rocky had a montage. And I actually think Impact's done a very good job with this feud. And they'll have a great match at Rebellion 2. And we had a quick look at TJP taking on Ace Austin, taking on Josh Alexander, which you're also getting at the pay-per-view. And could that steal the show? It certainly has an opportunity. It was then time to go all in with our Rebellion main event because out came Rich Swan. The Impact World Champion mentioned that he made a huge mistake last week where he presumed that Kenny Omega was going to be a gentleman, which is why he offered him his hand. And of course, Kenny slapped him instead. But if it's a fight he wants, it's a fight he can get. All he needs to do is come to the squared circle right now. Certainly, Kenny Omega and Don Callis weren't in the arena, but they did appear via satellite and made it very clear they don't care what Rich Swan thinks because Kenny Omega is allowed to have the biggest ego on the planet because he's about to be a world champion in three different companies. And I was a little bit like, yeah, that's a good point. If I was a world champion in three different companies, I'd be a bit of a jackass too. This all then went crazy because from nowhere back in the arena, Moose came out and he confronted Rich Swan. Well, that feels like something you should have done at the pay-per-view or maybe on the impact after the pay-per-view. But instead he told Rich how proud he was after they had their match at Sacrifice. And that if it wasn't for Kenny Omega's goons and he had his own goons, he would not be in the position that he was in and he would be in the position of Kenny Omega. I think, I'm not gonna lie, it was a weird promo. The major point of it though was to end with a threat to Rich Swan in the sense that if he does lose the Impact World Championship, the first person he's gonna have to answer to is Moose. So I like that little tease, but again, a lot of the words that were coming out of his mouth made me stand there as if to say, I don't know what the hell is going on. But the thing is, is that it's Moose and I really like Moose. And if you were gonna tell me that down the line he would beat Kenny Omega to retrieve the Impact World Championship, well, I would be an excited pup. Then had another package for Swan versus Omega and it was just fire like the rest of them. And we had another return video for Taylor Wilde. I'm going to presume that she'll be on Impact next week. But maybe she even turns up at the pay-per-view herself. It was also not the best week when it came to finishes in Impact because next up we were having Kira Hogan taken on Jordan Grace with the story hanging over this one is that they're all going to have a tag team match on Sunday but we don't know who Jordine Grace's partner's going to be. Jazz has stepped out the way, so Jordine needs somebody new. And while all of this has been really good, the only shame here was that it went around about three minutes, whatever the hell it was, and then Tasha Steele's just got involved. The referee saw it, so he called for the disqualification. Down. It just felt kind of lame, although once more I did understand what they were trying to do. It meant Fire and Flavor started to beat down Jordan Grace, so she needed someone to save her, which was of course her brand new tag team partner, which is none other than Rachel Ellering. I think that's actually a really good decision by Impact, because even when you look to them together, you're like, they do look like a tag team, although I do need to say this. If Jordan Grace goes after the tag team championships again, and then fails for the what must be the 72nd time, 
You need to put her back in the singles division and you need to build a really big program between her and Deonna Parazzo. That's what I need. But I do think, once again, this will be a good match at Rebellion. Because Impact, when it comes to that show, has done a damn good job. Finn Juice then responded to the Good Brothers and said that it's brilliant. They feel like they're back on the top of their game because when they lose at the weekend, it's just going to make the Finn Juice brand even better. And then we got our proper, oh my gosh, can you believe it video for Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega. And it just gets a massive round of applause. Impact, you have done tremendously with all of this. I cannot wait to see it. What I would like, though, is someone to explain to me how the hell our main event was even a thing. Because it was Eddie Edwards taking on Eric Young. And unless I fell into some kind of news chamber where I just made up the news, I thought Eric Young was injured and was going to be out of action for ages. But here he was just wrestling like he had no problems. Plus, it was good. Up. Each guy had their respective teams in their corner. And Eric Young, being the psychopath that he is, was like attacking Eddie Edwards' head and neck area because, of course, he was softening him up for the pile driver. And even when I say that out loud, it makes me sound like a super dark person. Edwards then went to hit the Boston knee pie, but Eric Young turned on the force and knew what was going on, so he rolled out the ring. And given that it's wrestling in 2021, Eddie just ran towards the ropes and dived at him. It was this that upset everybody else at ringside, though, so they all started to brawl. And once again, it caused such a fracas and such a distraction that by the time Eddie Edwards got back in the ring, Eric Young was waiting with the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll-up, and he picked up the shock win. Everybody continued to fight as Impact was going to go off air, and I tell you this, if Kenny Omega wasn't going to be on the show properly, this was the feud that you should have been focusing on, because everything Violent by Design has done so far has been a couple of thumbs up. I will say, though, tying into the intro, it wasn't the best go-home show I've ever seen in my life, but as I stand here right now and I ask myself the question, am I excited about Rebellion? The answer is yes. So that's all Impact actually did need to do. And for that reason, that reason alone, this is getting it up. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's episode of Impact. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Make sure you give us a follow on social media and click another video around my head so you can stay on the channel. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. I'll see you on the next one.